Good afternoon, all. Guess what day it is? It's hump day! Hope you guys survived the heat yesterday. It was a warm one. Um, today went pretty good. Um, got a late start today. Um, had a couple haircuts to do. Learned a new cut. Went pretty well. Um, I was pretty excited. Nervous, but excited. You know, you got to try things out. Um, to know if you're going to fail or not. Um, but I didn't fail. So that's always good. Um, I'm thankful for the talent that the Lord has blessed me with and the gift of being a perfectionist. That can be a, a curse, though. <laughs> no, it went pretty good. But uh, just wanted to come to you guys and basically talk to you today about... Uh, um, Everybody back in school remembered cause and effect. Um, I want to talk about love and effect. Yeah. Um, basically what that means is uh, how we love, what we love, and the effects that it's got not only on ourselves, but others. Um, there's many types of loves that we have. A lot of people love to shop. A lot of people love to get on Facebook. Um, a lot of us love our children. It, uh, it should be everybody that loves our children. Um, we love our husbands. We love our wives. We love our uh, our vehicles. We love a lot of things in life. Um, I love to go to the gym uh, every day to get the results that I want. But is it love or do we just enjoy it? You know, there's a big difference between love. Some people love smoking a cigarette right after they get done eating a meal. I don't know why. It was never my thing, so I didn't, you know. My thing was I loved drinking a lot of alcohol before I ate my food. So that, that was my thing. I can relate to that portion, you know. I didn't want to mess up my buzz. Did I love that? No, I just enjoyed that. Um, or at least thought I did. Um, love is a big word. Love is deep. Love hurts. Love is uh, is what people yearn for. Is what people want. And they want to be loved. And they want to love. Um, but sometimes when things happen to us in life, it messes up the whole meaning of love. Um, say for instance, you're a parent and you have your kids and you love them so dearly. You want to teach them the right things. Um, I'll use myself for an example again, you know, I'll be vulnerable for you guys. Um, me drinking and driving in front of my kids is basically teaching them that it's okay to do that. And I don't feel that's love. Um, I feel now that I look back on it, it was very selfish of me to do that. Um, because it's just basically teaching them, you know, we're supposed to be guardians of them. We're supposed to be, um, role models for them. You know, um, if we love them, we're supposed to teach them, you know, right from wrong. I mean, that's how we raise them from babies to adults. You know, they looked up to us and what they seen us do. Um, I talked to a lot of people and I'm like, uh, you need to stop smoking. They're like, I know. Well, if you know it, then stop. <laughs> um, you People used to tell me, oh, you shouldn't drink and drive. I know. Well, if I know it, then why didn't I stop? You know, it's hard. It, I mean, like that goes back to an addiction type thing. And it's really hard to break a habit slash addiction. But we need to look at the things that we're teaching our kids, you know, the things that we're doing um, around them to be their role models, you know, say you're a woman and you have a new boyfriend and they come into your kids' life and that boyfriend is doing stuff that you normally wouldn't teach your kids to do. And now your kids are like, well, he's doing it. So, you know, and ultimately it may influence you ladies to do what he is doing that isn't right 
It's going to, you know, it's just going to have a chain reaction on the kids. And then the kids are just going to form something terrible out of that. So we need to evaluate our relationships. Same things with the man, you know, sometimes the man will get a woman that, you know, he doesn't really know the full background of this woman. And next thing you know, some things come out and, you know, you start taking them traits of that woman and then your kids see that and then you know maybe you got a daughter then the daughter starts acting like the new girlfriend that you got and then maybe some things aren't you know um, good about them characteristics that she's acting like and then you got your daughter acting like that and then you know it just it just really creates confusion and it really um it just really isn't good it's not a good it's not a good scenario it's not a good ending so we need to reevaluate our relationships, but love takes over. When love takes over, it just really, you know, masks. It masks your whole self and you just, oh my gosh, I'm so in love. You know, you would just do anything for this person. And, you know, and that could definitely leave a bad footprint on the kids that are involved if that characteristic that this person has isn't what it's supposed to be, isn't Christian-like, isn't you know, doesn't have these, um, characteristics, you know, like say you're not a smoker, but the person you get with is a smoker, you know, and your kids have been around a person that doesn't smoke, you know, and then they see them or you doing it. And then, you know, they're going to be like, Oh, this is okay. The next thing you know, you're going to catch them smoking cigarettes eventually. And you're going to be upset. I mean, I've seen it more than once and it's like, well, what do you expect? They're learning all this stuff from you. Basically what I'm trying to get at is love will overpower your decisions. And it's really, 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 really hard. And the effect of that could really be bad. Um, people love to shop. Do they love it or do they enjoy it? They probably enjoy it because love, I feel like love, um, is like a best friend is like your wife is like maybe your dog you know i feel like love should be somebody or something you would die for you would go to your grave for this and that's what love should be and there's only one true official love like that and it's our lord and savior jesus christ because he already died for us he hung there on that cross for all of our sins everything that we ever did he took that for the team he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, he, he forgave his other uh, um, two people on the cross. You know, he died for us. And I feel like that's what love should be. If we're willing to lay down our lives for somebody, then that's love. That's ultimate love. We would do that for our kids. We would do that probably for our best friend. But sometimes best friends like to run our lives and we don't, you know, we need good advice sometimes, but we don't need to follow in their footsteps. I feel like sometimes uh, best friends or friends in general can really ruin a great relationships by their dysfunctions. What, what I mean by that is they could be going through a rough time and it has a chain reaction. You know, sometimes we need to be careful about how we listen to their advice. You know, we can't take that to heart. Um, we can agree with them. But we can't bring this dysfunction back to our happy home. I mean, dysfunctions outside of our homes kind of come back in. And it takes a, you know, it just takes a lot to not let that happen. So friends, I encourage you just uh, when things happen, when love takes over your mind, when when you love somebody, don't lead them in the wrong direction. Make sure that you know 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 that this is what you want love to be um i had some heartbreaks which totally screwed up love for me ain't nothing worse than a broken heart that can make a person never want love again and it hurts that's i got to admit i think that losing a person which i don't have enough wisdom to touch base on losing somebody through death. Um, there was only a, a few people, my grandmother and my stepdad that I've lost, but not a husband, not a wife, not a child. 
I don't know what it's like to lose somebody, so I can't really touch base on that, but I know what a broken heart is and it hurts. But like I said, there's only one person that can help us through this and we can't blame him for these situations that we go through. We had to ask him. We had to be in his presence. We have to seek his face. Say, Father, there's got to be a reason for this. And friends, that's the love we need is his love. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't really need another person's love because I have the love of my father. And that's enough for me. It's enough. And I know that I'll never get a broken heart from him. I know that I can always confide in him. And I know that I will always, always be loved by him. Under any circumstance that I do, under anything that I do, he will. Not that I'm going to keep doing it, but he will forgive me. He will ultimately, you know, he already laid his life down for me. So that's that's proof in the pudding right there, guys. I mean, that's enough for me. If somebody's willing to die for me, that's 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 the winner that's the winner on my side so friends i just encourage you uh evaluate your loves um in your life um and don't let them take over um who you are or who your kids look up to let them look up to a role model let them look up to jesus because we have to love jesus first in order for us to love we have to love him first and love through him and friends, if it's an addiction that we're loving, we need to try to give it up. Because what we give up now for a short period of time will only end up for eternal greatness. I mean, yeah, it may suck for a minute. You know, if you give up something right now that's going to hurt for a couple months, it's going to, you know, you might be, you say you're a cigarette smoker and you're real irritable when you don't smoke. So let people know that you're going through a rough time. You're trying to give this up. They'll encourage you. If they're your real friends, they'll encourage you to give up this thing. And they'll be there for you to help you out within any, anything. I know I would. I would love people to kick any addiction that they have. So I would try to be there with encouraging words, with whatever I can do to uplift them, to get them not thinking about that thing that they're trying to give up. So what I'm saying is just let somebody know that you're trying to do this and let them help you. And then, you know, it may take a couple months of irritability and frustration and withdrawals. Those suck. But it's so worth it at the end. I mean, you'll go through that and then you'll be like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I gave this up. Now I have a lifetime to live without this. And there's one thing you don't want to go your lifetime without living without, and that's Jesus Christ. So friends, I urge you, put your love in him. And the effect is going to be mind-blowing. I love you guys. Chest and arms day. I'm running a little bit behind. This place is packed. So I'm going to get in here and get it done. I love you guys. If I can help you out in any way, reach out. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys are thinking. I still need to know. I got some hearts, some thumbs. I need some words. I love you guys. Love God. Love others. Love yourselves. Peace.